Hey guys, Insane Drummer, Bear here. And today I wanted to talk about um, another thing in music theory that is uh, a little confusing to people, especially when you first start up on piano or any other instrument, and uh, that's chords. So of course we get, um, you know, it all starts out with one note, right? So uh, this note, as we know, is a C. So if I do two notes, now we call that what's called an interval because it's, it goes from the distance from whatever note you're at to however high or low you're going. So a distance from this note to say D, which would be a second because they're right next to each other. If we keep going, that's called a third. C to F is a fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. And then when we end up back on the same note, that's called an octave. So chords are made up of these thirds, these intervals we call a third. So that's a third, and that's a third. If we wanted to, we could keep going in thirds. And what you do to get a chord is you build these thirds three notes in a row. So C, E, and G is the C chord. And if we keep going up, now D is our bottom note, and we build thirds off D. Now we have a D minor chord. So on E minor, F major, G major, A minor, this is called B diminished, and back to C major. So that's some of the first stuff you learn on piano is these really simple three note chords. And these three note chords are also known as what's called a triad. A triad is a three note chord. Now there's different types of these triads, but we're just going to stick with major today. Because what I wanted to talk about is uh, a little bit of the vocabulary of a chord and some things that we can do with a chord. So a triad, okay? The bottom note of the triad, in this case, is the root, the C, okay? And then if we build the third on top of that, we get the E. So the E is called the third of the chord. And since this is not a third from the root, it's a fifth, we call this the fifth of the chord. So we always build from the bass note third, fifth. You put it together and you get a triad. Root, third, fifth. Now the cool thing about chords is that this is only one shape or type of the C chord. C, E, and G. Root, third, fifth. If I move this C up to here, now we have, in the popular world, is called a slash chord, but in theory is called an inversion. These are fancy terms for just Hey, your bottom notes moved up an octave, brother. So now we get a third, fifth, and then our root is up here. But if we notice, now our third is on the bottom of the chord. We call that the bass note, because it's the lowest note of the chord. Okay, third, fifth, root. We call this first inversion. So just remember, first inversion of a chord is when the third, or the bass note, is the third of the chord, okay? So if we move this third up to here, now we still have the same ingredients we started out with, C, E, G, E, G, C, G, C, E. This is called second inversion because it's fifth root and, that's right, third, okay? So this is second inversion, and then if I move this G up one more time, hey, we've seen that shape before. Now we're back into root position. So triads, three note chords, can only be inverted twice. Root position, because the root is in the bass. First inversion, because the third is in the bass. Second inversion, because the fifth of the chord, the original chord, the original chord, the fifth of that original chord is in the bass back to root position. So a really good thing to do on piano is this little exercise where you go from root, first inversion, second inversion, root, first inversion, second inversion, root, and so on. And you can do that like that in a block style or you can do it in a arpeggio style. That wasn't so good, but I ran out, I couldn't see. <laughs> so that is what we call it in classical terms root first inversion second inversion root position now in the popular world in lead sheet notation you see a c or a c chord you'll see a c slash e what that means is that this is still a c chord but the e is in the bass so if you ever see a c slash e all it means is that the c is the chord but the e is in the bass 
If you see a C slash G, now it's still a C chord, but the G is in the bass. Basically, they're saying, hey, it's not root position. Just remember, whenever you have a slash chord, it's not a root position chord. Now, could you still play it as a root position chord? You could, you could. So for example, let me get some music and I'll give you an example. So, and this say something, we got a B minor, G, D, G, and then basically an A, okay? So B minor, we get B and the root, that's a B minor chord. And then a G chord, because since it didn't have a slash, that means G root position. So B minor root position, G root position, D root position, A root position. So all those chords are in root position, which just means that the note that you're seeing here is gonna be the bass note, okay? So root position, and then a G root position, and then a D root position and then an A root position. So it turns out to be a really pretty chord progression. But if I wanted to, I could invert that D chord. And I could invert that A chord. So you can always invert a chord if you feel the need. Basically, it's good as a pianist to know all your vocabulary of chords by going triads I mean by doing uh, root position first inversion second inversion root position first inversion second inversion on every single chord <laughs> thanks for watching today guys uh, I feel like slash chords are one of those things that confuse people and basically it just means that um, whatever note you see in the slash uh, whatever first letter you see is the chord type slash whatever note you see on the right side will be what your bass note will be. Thanks for watching.